Hey there, Glenn here with a very cool encounter story, this time just up in Colorado Springs, an area called Black Forest. I suppose you probably have heard by now of David Grush, the whistleblower who's gone to Congress to tell about a crash retrieval program of UFOs, um, or UAPs, whatever you want to call it. But he's telling this crazy story, and today's interview correlates with that. This gentleman saw something completely unusual, something never expected to see while he was taking a break and working up in uh, Black Forest on a home. So I'll let you hear his story and I will see you on the other side. Let me know what you think. Cheers. 20, 30 yards away was this thing peeking over this pine bush. It was a large, hairy animal. Uh, dark brown, black hair. All of a sudden, this creature let out a, I want to call it a blood curdling, growling, howling scream. That's when I realized it wasn't my friend that had snuck up on me. <gasps> Dude, all the branches that are broken off are red. That's crazy. There's no medulla. Well, I first took your number off of a little flyer I saw at the uh, local hardware store. Oh, okay. And then I uh, ran into you here at uh, Home Depot. Yeah. In town here. Yeah. 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 And, we, and we got to talking about weirdness, and you have yes. a weird story. Well, I'm always ready to talk about weirdness. <laughs> yeah. But you have an interesting story from outside of Colorado Springs. Yes. Yes. Okay. So... Um, this was a couple of years ago, 2021, uh, middle of summer, probably June or July. I was working as an electrician's apprentice. Um, didn't stick around very long with that job. But um, most of our jobs were in the Black Forest area, of northern Colorado Springs, almost up to Monument, but real close to the Air Force Academy. Yeah. Might have something to do with it. Anyways. Um, so I'm out on the back porch of this McMansion, basically, you know, three-story house. Um, it's, you know, it's just contractors in there right now. Um, and we're just doing, you know, the outlets and whatnot. Um, so I'm out on the back porch just catching some fresh air, looking at Pikes Peak and the beautiful view. Lunchtime? Uh, I don't know, probably before lunch. But day yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, day job. It was the middle of day. Probably 10 in the morning or so, you know, beautiful day. Um, and as I'm staring out, looking at Pike's Peak, out from the trees, it's about the size of a beach ball, an aluminum beach ball, that's okay. what it looked like. Comes up probably 15 feet away from me, checks me out. This is maybe over the course of two seconds. Checks me out and then flips right up over the trees. Just whoop silent completely silent um as far as i could tell no markings to be seen but it definitely came across as a physical object not a you know a, an orb of light seriously looked like aluminum and after it happened i'm just like How is did this what did i just see and uh the first thing that comes to my mind is in the, the Phantom Menace, the, the first of the prequel Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Darth Maul, when they're on um, Tatooine, right? That's where Anakin's from. He's got this drone that flies around. That's what I, I thought of at first. Oh, really? That's, that's, what, that's what clicked. And, uh, yeah, except without all the antennas and stuff on it. You know? Wow. Yeah. So, and that... And then it was it? Yep. Yep. So all of five seconds? Yes. Yes. And then I went to find, like, my one buddy there to tell him about it. And I don't know if he believed me or not, but I know what I saw. That's and that was And that was the most in-person, physical thing I've ever seen. You know, I've seen lights up in the sky that are moving in impossible ways and that but never something 
20, 15, 20 feet away from me, you know. I mean, that's that's and nowhere, that's immediately next to you. The way it moved, it's like, whoop, you know, it's like just came up and checked me out for half a second and then zipped on over the trees. Okay, so, so everybody's yeah. going to say what you saw was a mylar balloon that flew in on the wind. Right. Um, I. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I guess if you, I don't know how a mylar balloon can go, because there was a distinct like stop, you know, it hovered right there, and uh, it obviously like. It knew it, I was looking at it as far as I could. T I mean, you don't, what, you know, when you see a, if you lock eyes with a bobcat in the woods, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you get that connection. If I lock eyes with a bicycle over there, obviously I, I don't get anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this object recognized me and I recognized it. And then it left. And then it left. And it left. Wow. So how, how fast did it come in? Did it meander its way in? Did it come zipping in? So it came in under the trees from below the canopy and it left over the canopy. I remember that distinctly. And I don't know at what point it caught my eye. It, was, it, could, have been, it could have been hovering there for a while, for all I know, and I just didn't see it until it zipped on up next to me, you know. Or, you know. So you're on the balcony? Yeah. Yeah, on the big, big, nice back porch. Overlooking these trees. Yeah, yeah. And this thing comes comes up from below because mm -hmm. you're on the third floor yeah yeah comes up from below how did it come to eye level was it below your eye level um it was pretty close to eye level like i said it was pretty far away but yeah it must have been 20 30 feet off the ground and because we were up at about the level of the canopies of all the ponderosas and stuff but it came to within 15 20 feet yeah. of you yes yes so I got a good look at it for that for that second. I really absorbed the image of it. I mean, it's it's burned in my mind up here. So you know, no markings whatsoever. Nope. It it did it didn't look like a perfectly clean sphere though. Like it looked like it maybe had some surface imperfections. It wasn't like perfectly shiny. You know, it looked like if you had an aluminum beach ball and you were playing with it for. A while you know tossing it on the ground and you know stuff like that that's how the surface looked to me did it look did it look damaged or would, did it did it say, was it indistinct it's too hard to say I wouldn't there was nothing that I would call damaged to okay me. it's just if it was perfectly shiny like a mirror finish that would have been one thing but it was you know that's where I was getting paint, to a satin finish <laughs> if, yeah yeah, a satin. yeah. <laughs> yeah not gloss but satin. yeah so um, yeah, so this thing, the, I, the description, again, so it's about how large in diameter? I would say like two feet. Two really feet across. Two feet across, yeah, okay. in diameter, okay. right. Uh, and it's silver, silverish? Alumin it looked like aluminum. I, I am familiar with metals. I'm a knife maker, and I, it looked like aluminum to me. Okay. You know, okay. or some kind of stainless steel. But not like polished. That. No, no. More of a dull aluminum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no markings, any seams, anything no. like that no, that you saw? No noticeable seams or anything. There's a, have you ever heard of the Bet Sphere? Yeah. That's what it looked like, but a little bit bigger. Okay, okay. The bet, the bet sphere has that kind of surface to it though. And they found that just on the ground in a field and it was Florida, right? I think Florida. so, yeah. So, you know, this looked as if it had been rolling around the ground or had smashed through some tree branches oh, before, really? which I'm sure it did probably on the way to see me, so. So it didn't, did it, it you didn't feel like it was damaged, but no. scuffed? Yes. Scuffed is a great word, yeah. Really? Okay. Used. Yeah. Used? Yes. Did it seem to have any kind of coating on it? or was I don't it... think so, because the way the light reflected off it, it did seem like bare metal. Okay. Yeah. It had a bit of a shine to it, but certainly not like a chrome look. And yeah. it hung out there for a split second, a couple of seconds? Yeah. It stayed in one place for a split second. Okay, so let's. Yeah, we're I'd talking. Say. We're talking five seconds of 
two so seconds. So reenact the whole thing. I'll so here it comes I'll flying you, in. I'll show you with my hand kind of the way okay. I did before it came up. That like fast. That, just about that fast, yeah. And this time it came up to you and then went up over the trees. Yep, yep. So it started under the canopy and then left over the canopy. Yeah. And I thought that was odd. Yeah. Sure. Like it almost... I, to me, I got the sense that it wasn't expecting me to see it, that I wasn't supposed to see that. That's the distinct feeling that I got. And yeah. I'm getting shivers right now thinking about sure. that. That I got sure. this feeling, you weren't supposed to see that. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like, boop! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then it boogied off? Yes. Did you hear anything? No. Silent. It didn't disturb any branches. Okay, that was my next question. Yes, did not disturb any branches. Very agile. Did it you avoid know. things as it went? Do yeah. You? Oh yeah, it went around the trees, and it came, it came from around because we're just talking a forest of ponderosas, you know. And as it is in Colorado, you know, you can walk through the forest and the undergrowth. It's yeah. not like Oregon where it's just dense with ferns. Yeah. And, you know, um, so there's room for it to navigate around. And, but but it, it was maneuvering around the trees, yeah. avoiding impacting things and yes, stuff. Yes, yes, for sure. Zipped up right it to is, you. Yeah, it definitely was not, um, you know, like an intangible type of thing. It was very physical, moved like a physical object, you know. No sound. No. No sensation of wind as it passed by. I wasn't close enough. You weren't if it close did. enough? Okay. Yeah, if it had flown right by my face, I'd assume it would. But, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was pretty gnarly. Any pretty gnarly. any other... I mean... You're... I wish there was more to the story. Yeah. I wish yeah. it had hung out longer. Yeah. I wish I could have seen it better. So... Approached it, you know. Yeah. Boy, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And how fast, how fast would you say it was moving? I mean, like... Nothing crazy, not like 80 miles an hour, I'd right? say, you know, maybe at, at the max, as it flew over the trees, like 50, 40 miles an hour. Okay. It's hard to tell. It's, it's hard to tell. It's such a weird yeah. size object, but yeah. yeah. out of context. Yeah. Then, yeah, a car I could tell, but yeah. 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 Um, did, uh, so prior to this, you, you've seen some other so, yeah. stuff in the sky? And sure, stuff, yeah. So um, one, one year I was in Moab with mm -hmm. my girlfriend. We were just camping. Um, it was, you know, the middle of the night, 10 o'clock or so. And we're just watching these lights up in the distance for, I don't know, probably hours. We were watching them just, you know, that kind of movement, you know, yeah. it just like goes up here. Maybe it'll zip over here really quick and then keep doing this thing. I don't know what they're doing, like scanning or just messing around with something up in the clouds. Wow. But yeah, we stood there and watched those guys for, yeah, like I said, a couple hours until we went to sleep. They were probably up there still after we were asleep. We were camping in Moab and... Um, Along the Green River. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, it might have been just the fact that we were in Utah. We were like, let's just keep our eyes up at the skies and just see if we see anything. The fact that we were camping. Mm -hmm. um, I remember how hot it was. It was yes, so hot that we night. We were outside of the tent because it was like 80 degrees and it was 2 a.m. probably. Yeah, and just, yeah, all night it was really uh, hot. Yeah. Um, we had and, nothing better to do but watch these UFOs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like he said, it was like... From our perspective, it seemed like a tiny orange or red dot up in the clouds that was moving very erratically. And it, yeah, sometimes would pause in a little spot over here and right. then dart over there. The, and the, um, you could say ultralight, weather balloon, those are the normal right, things, right. right? But we sat there for hours watching them, you know? Yeah, and, and the movement was so erratic, basically. At points, that, you could maybe think it could be someone in a parachute or some kind of a gliding craft, but then all of a sudden it shoots up over here, and then you got, well, I, I don't know how a human could even survive going like that on a paraglider or whatever, you know? Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's that's that yeah, story. Yeah. yeah. Um, one time, and this, is, this one... 
I don't really tell people often because it was on the 4th of July. Okay. And no one's going to believe that you ever saw a UFO on the 4th of July. Right, right, right That's right. like the one night of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, anyways. It, it was or New Year's. Nothing, that would be another crazy. one. Yeah, just, just a light up there doing that same kind of thing, those sort of random movements. And where was this? It was in Denver. In Denver. I was in Cheeseman Park celebrating the 4th of July. Okay. Yeah, with my buddies. We would do a barbecue out there every year. And, uh, yeah, they came running over, and they were, like, they are probably a little messed up at this point, but I was grilling the burgers and stuff, so I was good. And they were, like, you know, hey, you got to come look at this thing. And I'm, like, dude, it's the 4th of July, like, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and But then I actually stood there and watched it with them for a minute, and I was, like, oh, shit, you know what? Yeah, that's... That's not a little firework or a little, you know how the, they've got those ones that'll kind of do a waterfall and they yeah. kind of swirl around. It's not one of those, you know. It was hanging up there for several minutes while we were stood there and watched it. So. And was it moving at the well? It was hanging yeah. up there. It was yeah. just yeah. Kind of like bouncing said, around. Yeah, that same kind of movement. That's all. That's I've, every time I've seen UFOs, they're always doing that same kind of thing where it's just sort of like, and over here, and then it'll go up there. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, I mean, because there are a lot of stories, in fact, in the news, um, uh, there was, people were seeing things over Denver and catching it with cameras from multiple angles, mm -hmm. seeing dots and stuff, and I've, it's yeah. amazing how many stories I've gotten like this, but, mm. wow. Because I think lots of people have seen that type of uh, UFO, and maybe people have seen it and never even realized or thought about it, or sure. thought twice, they thought, oh, that's a weird plane or you know I yeah. guess that maybe that's a guy in a parachute or something you know but I don't know who skydives at night <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um so. getting is there anything else curious no, no okay no I Fair enough. typically stay away from the weird stuff but every <laughs> once in a while it finds me sure you know, not really I'm, but well I think you know I think that's the way people stumble into things they see something once or twice or yeah. maybe yeah. three times but then that you know but it's only for a moment yeah and it's like okay well, I don't know what to do with yeah. it but my brother has an interesting story that I could re retell if you if you want it it's does he live in the area no he lives in Oregon okay he's, he's yes I'd love Portland. to hear it yeah and ultimately it'd be cool if I could connect with him too if yeah. possible yeah but yeah tell tell me so he was camping in the woods in Oregon. I think they were staying at some place that's got some hot springs, and they were just camping there. So this is not out in BLM land in the middle of nowhere. It's still a fairly populated area, but just out in the woods. Yeah. Yep. He was telling me they've got all these like wooden chutes that the water runs down in these big wooden barrel bathtubs or something like that. Okay. Anyway, so they were all at their campsite. This is late, and they're just shooting the shit around the campfire. Um, and so... They, they see a light coming towards them from the woods, so immediately they assume it's someone with a flashlight that's coming to either tell them some bad news, tell them to shut up, or, you know what I mean, something. So, you know, they kind of all get up and are ready to receive this person for them to come up, and then they realize as it's getting closer, it's not making any noise, and so someone with a flashlight obviously stumbling. We said earlier, you know, like... The, the brush in Oregon is just thick. It is, yeah. And you really can't just, like, walk through it casually with a flashlight. Um, and so as this light gets closer, they realize it's just a light. It's an orange glowing orb. Um, I don't know how large it was. It was about, like, at not eye level, but, you know, like, waist level. And it comes up real close to their campfire. I mean, like, it's basically sitting around their campfire with them. And they're trying to engage with it. They're, like, really having a time, you know. And so it it leaves. I don't know how long it hung out with them for. And so they're following it, you know. They're like, we want to chase this thing. We want to see where it goes or yeah, what it's doing. Yeah. And unfortunately, the orb just starts going down a hill. And then just starts going like this, and the hill keeps going like this, and the orb is just going like that, and, okay. and they're already like not really able to make to make it down the hill and yeah, chase yeah, it because yeah. it's just so thick and steep. But yeah, that was that, and so wow, right, and so what I wonder is, did we see the same thing, but it glows at night, or are there, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know thinking about this chrome yeah this right. sphere yeah trying to you know go you know 
because they're talking now about AI drones, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the vibe that the UFO scientific community is going, that the, right. a lot of these are drones. And I was thinking, there's a, there's a duck hunting blind and a deer hunting blind uh-huh. that's basically a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. So you're mirroring whatever's around you. Wouldn't that be a perfect surveillance drone to park in the woods? Mm-hmm. The sphere would reflect all yeah. the woods all yeah. the way around. If you were nestled in the tree, oh man, I'm getting right. shivers. Yeah. If you were nestled in the tree and you were chrome, mm-hmm. you might see a disturbance, but it would all the colors would match. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So I, it, that's interesting that it was flying in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. But that would be really interesting if it was a surveillance drone. Yeah. If you parked something like that in my bushes in my front yard, I probably wouldn't see it. You might not, yeah. It, unless unless you saw it move, mm-hmm. unless you could track the motion, you might not see it um, super obviously. And that's probably why they're shiny and reflective. Yeah. Um, if it is a surveillance drone... You know, I would be more inclined to think that it's more of an avatar type of system where there is someone that's looking through it, controlling it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it could be an artificial intelligence, too, that's just, you know, scoping things out and taking taking, uh, measurements and collecting data, I guess. Um, I always liked to think that there was some other entity that was controlling that thing because, I, like I said... I, it, I had this feeling of, oh, you noticed me. Oh, crap, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Like, oh, sh- oh, shit, he's seeing me. You yeah. know? Like, <laughs> I got to go. Can we pull up on your phone? Yeah. Pull up. Observing that blow up, which is mm-hmm. an apparent spherical object. You'll see it. Uh, yeah, this one. At the top of the screen. There it goes. And then the oh, wow. Follow. Holy see, shit. Yeah. 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 This is essentially all of the data we have associated with this event. Wow. We don't have resolved yet. That is an unresolved case. We are still. Yeah. Seeing. Yeah, this one's cruising. Yeah. And then. Uh, is this the footage that you were this is the footage I was doing do another if you go to the next one um, go uh, type in Baghdad sphere oh there's Jeremy Corbell yeah now yeah here's I don't know if that's the same one so I'm gonna walk you through two. okay so go ahead and go uh, skinwalker sphere because they just showed it on the um, on the preview. Again, thank you so much for yeah. taking the time. Oh, of course, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's only a momentary, what, five-second sighting. Yes. Less but than it's that, incredibly but yeah. important yeah. because it's like that close. Yeah. This isn't from a Reaper drone. Right, right. Miles away. Yeah, yeah. This is something that's right there in front of me. In yeah. Black Forest. Yep. Outside of Colorado Springs. Yes. Each one of these properties, what, a couple of acres? Yeah. 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 Two to five acre little little McMansions yeah. up in the in the woods there. Yeah. Well, if that's not enough for you, I have another cool addendum to this. After I recorded the sit down interview with this witness, I was online on YouTube and I was on Thomas Fessler's Disclosure Tonight YouTube channel. They were discussing UFOs, and that's what they always do. And a gentleman named Richard Doty, he's controversial. He was a uh, special operations U.S. Air Force guy. Uh, honestly, he was caught up in the whole uh, disinformation campaign with UFOs and caught a lot of flack for that and kind of apparently has flipped sides and is now pushing for disclosure and is a whistleblower of his own right. Don't know quite to think about him, but while I was on this uh, YouTube channel, I was discussing, and uh, I saw him there, so I reached out to him, 
and asked him what he thinks about these fears, what he thought, what he knows about them. We talked for a minute and he related a story that ties in directly with this. And if I can follow up on this, that'll be a follow-up video. Um, but it's very interesting. So let me know what you think and take a listen to this. But then I just got a recent one from up in Colorado Springs, about a two foot, two foot diameter one buzzing by some guy's house. And so I'm just, it's super interesting to me right now. Is that the fireman? No, a it's, fireman? It's a, it was an electrician. He was working on a house and walked out on a balcony and saw one of these things fly up, look at him and fly off. It was all of about a five second encounter. Well, it's ironic because we have a, we're working on a case where a fireman, uh, off-duty fireman at his house, and he was out in his balcony, uh, he was getting ready to grill, and one of these things came uh, through a small uh, silver object and stopped right above him. Uh, he was scared to death. He kind of froze because he didn't know what it was or what it was going to do. Then a shot straight up into the sky. That's almost exactly what this happened to this kid. And he said, wow. it, it looked at him for just, you know, a split second. He was on the third floor balcony. It flew up to him, looked at him, and then took off over the trees. Yeah. That's and it's, amazing black, because it's, it's in the black forest area just north of Colorado Springs. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where this It was Colorado Springs. I'm not sure exactly where this fire mouth duty fireman lived, but... But uh, yeah, we we we're, we were working on that, trying to f find other people to saw it. And oh, wow, <laughs> and that's amazing. Yeah, this that's this happened. Amazing. I want to say in 2021, if I remember right. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when uh, this one happened. Uh, another guy is handling it, but I I know of it. I was briefed on it. I don't. Yeah, I'm going to be. Dates, I'm actually going on site with him tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. He's going to show me the exact location, and we're going to document this. So. Wow, that's that would I would be that would be fantastic to, to know about that. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. Another very cool story from some people that seem to be telling the truth. That's why I like about this. I mean, I just don't know how to square when somebody credible tells an incredible story. That's the reason I like doing these one-on-one -on -one interviews because I get to read their faces and hopefully you do too. And we can judge whether or not they're telling the truth. And I find both Parker and Michelle to be very straightforward, very truthful. They're just relating a story. So again, I want to really thank you guys for sharing your story. Um, and what adds more credibility to it is other people are telling the same kind of stories. So if you or anybody you know has a UFO story, Bigfoot story, or some other weirdness, let me know. Encounters at modernexplorer.me and I would love to document your story. And uh, yeah. Oh, there's more Bigfoot stuff coming up. This is not all just me UFOs seems to be on the menu right now, but I have a giant footprint cast and I'm interviewing the gentleman who took this casting back in 2010 and I'm going on site and doing some other research on that. It's coming up very soon, hopefully next week. Uh, if not, there will be other stuff coming, but it's not going to all be UFOs and it's not all going to be Bigfoot. We got, you know, we're exploring whatever is out there. Uh, and so I'm, it's just really exciting. So again, stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you can get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If 
only I could go back in time I tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Ooh.